Hello everyone, Jim here. You're watching the Green Dream Project. I am very excited because I've been looking at the weather forecast and it looks like monsoon season is coming a little earlier this year. Now, I'd be more excited if we had stuff set up to catch some of this rain, but unfortunately, we're not that far along yet. <laughs> but, this is going to be an excellent opportunity to observe the monsoon rains here. Now that's exactly one of the reasons why we wanted to be out here on the land is to get those observations done. I'm hoping that we start getting enough rain where we can see how water flows along this property. I have some good ideas just based on the landscape, checking out aerial views, checking out contour lines. I have a pretty good idea of how this water is going to flow around here. But, like I said, nothing beats first-hand observation. There's definitely going to be little pockets of where water might pool up. It's these things we have to pay attention to. A couple things I'm very curious to to, uh, about is the roads going along the sides of the property. I definitely want to check that out. The property concaves a little bit from the north and the south side. They're a little higher and they kind of dip, they kind of concave a little bit toward the middle. Toward the middle but maybe closer to the south side. This area I'm definitely going to want to check out. It looks like there's usually a lot of water that runs through there. I'd also like to see how some of these things perform. Um, so we got our gray water basin set up. These basins will also be very useful during the monsoon season. And I want to see how water flows around there. To see if we make, need to make any changes to the mounds. Make sure that when the water does flow around here, it flows into the basins, filling that up. After all, when water harvesting, one of the best places you can store water is in the soil. So anytime where you can improve soil health, where you, where you can increase the water absorption into the soil or do any kind of earthworks where it gives time for that water to penetrate into the soil those are definitely things you want to consider but man I'm crazy excited when I saw that rain in the forecast I'm super excited I just want to be able to I'm hoping that when that rain does come I'm gonna try and get some footage hopefully I can show you guys not only so I can see how that water flows along the property I'm hoping I can get some footage to show you guys what's happening around with that water as well so it's very exciting. Since the monsoons are coming, I just wanted to go over with you guys some of the things we're thinking about as far as water harvesting goes. And maybe it'll spark some ideas with you, things that you can do on your own place, or maybe uh, you have some ideas that we can utilize. Anything is welcome. But uh, let's come check it out. I'll go over some things with you, and then uh, should be exciting times. <laughs> so since I am already here, I will discuss the human or hacienda. <laughs> so, since we have this redone, we're gonna put we're gonna put up a gutter going along the front here, and that'll drain to a water tank, which we will place probably right on the back, right in this area. I'm thinking we can at least make this tank ten feet long. I'm thinking that this tank we will end up constructing ourselves out of ferro cement. That might be one of our first ferro cement projects that we try. But like I said, with the Humanure Hacienda, with this roof area, we should be able to collect roughly 100 gallons per every inch of rain, which will be nice. That will make the Humanure Hacienda self-sufficient as far as water goes. We will also have a shed here. Don't mind what you're seeing here. I'm gonna show you that in a later video. Uh, but once that structure is done, that will harvest water. Probably more water than the human or hacienda since it is a larger build. Now our gray water basins. Yeah, they are specifically meant for gray water. But as large as these basins are, they will be great for harvesting rainwater as well. The trick will be though, just to see how water flows around these basins. 
and to see how much water they catch. But I believe it should be a decent amount and I'm excited to see how that works out. Now the trailers. We have two out here now, but Grace will join us eventually and that'll be three out here, which will give us quite a bit of space. Now first I was thinking that we would collect water off of each individual structure into tanks. But now the thinking is we might build a larger structure over all three of these tank, uh, all three of these trailers, and collect water off of those. It'd be quite the project, but if done right, we should be able to collect most, if not all, of our water needs for drinking, bathing, all that stuff. It's just right now. Our water holding capacity isn't as large as it needs to be. We only have two 2,500 gallon tanks. Uh, we are looking to expand that in a future, at a future time. Now the shipping container. This is one of, this is probably the first structure that we had out here. And it's, it's something I've been eyeing up for water harvesting for a while. We can put gutters up along all these edges funnel that into tanks and I believe the water holding capacity if I remember when I did the math should be around 600 gallons per every inch of rain so that is definitely something we want to utilize for water harvesting and don't forget our little cactus pits again earthworks do not have to be large they can be just small enough to care for the plants that you have in there and that will be excellent water harvesting as well. All right, now I'm gonna take you guys out to the roads. I don't know if you've ever seen our roads before, but I'm gonna give you a shot. And uh, I'll talk about water harvesting from there as well. When we first scoped out this property, the roads is something we were very excited about. Road runoff is an often overlooked area for water harvesting but if utilized correctly, can be a tremendous source of getting extra water onto the property. And we have two going along the sides of our property. Now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. It is kind of a long, basically dirt and gravel road. Now, the more impermeable your road surface is, the more water you're gonna catch off. But even with a dirt and gravel road, it's this is going to be very compacted because of all the vehicles that drive through here on a regular basis. Well, not that we get a lot of vehicles traveling through here on a regular basis. Obviously, I'm walking down the middle of the road right now, and yeah, you know, I'm not in exactly any immediate danger. <laughs> One of our thoughts is we can always deepen the trench that they have down here already along the sides and we can funnel that water kind of back into the property. So this here borders the west side of the property, which is one of the lower points of the property. So actually water flows down in the direction toward where we're standing right now. We'll also get water going from the north and south. And if we trench it right, we should be able to direct water back onto the property and that will help us can grow things right along the property line. Now another area of the property that we're very excited about is this area going straight back here. Now we have a natural dip in the property going from the north end and the south end. And it kind of meets right over in this area. So I'm excited to see when those monsoon rains come exactly how much water will flow through this area. We've noticed in times where it rains where this area will be wet, even along the road here, will just stay wet for days and days after it rains. So this will be an exciting, and the soil quality is different around this area too. So here's some footage of just walking the trench. Some areas you can see here are still kind of dark. 
it's a lot softer on the feet than a lot of the other areas. You can see the grass that grows around here is a little bit different. I don't know if it shows on footage, but you can definitely see with the naked eye just the difference in the way the grass grows along this trench. And I believe that may even be an indicator of how the water flows along here. But hopefully we'll know, hopefully we'll have the answers to these questions shortly. But when I did a soil test around here, this area is very sandy. It's got a higher, higher sand quality, lower clay content. And I believe this will have better draining drainage as far as water goes. Water might soak into this ground a lot faster than it does on other areas of the property. Which is good. Like I said, you want that water to soak in when you can. So my thoughts are initially that when we do start our food forest, this is the area where we might do it. I don't know, some of the plants are already anticipating the rain. But it looks like the acacia is coming into bloom. A lot of them have turned green. And they started growing these little yellow, little yellow buds. This is what we call the, the danger zone of the property. This is our, our briar patch. <laughs> this is one area you don't want to walk through unless you're fully clothed with a thick pair of pants and a long sleeve shirt because you will get cut up walking around through this area. <laughs> Not for the faint of heart. Okay, we are now on the north end of the property. This road is a larger road. Much more compact with a gravel. I think we have even more ability to catch runoff from this road. And of course the idea here will be to maybe increase the trench already along the side of the road here and maybe trench that onto the property on contour. If we can get that water to spread right along the flat surfaces of the land, we can get that water to spread out evenly and soak into the soil. Now this area I'm about to show you guys I'm very excited about. I think it has a ton of potential. This one didn't occur to me till a little while after we bought the property and we were scoping things out. And then I looked at this and I'm thinking, this could be amazing. This could generate quite a bit of water for the property if we do it right. Yeah, that's right, coming up to it. Look at this mesquite. Like, I don't care what your fence is. I'm growing where I want to grow. So we are now coming up to the cattle guard. This area right here is on the northeast side of the property. This is probably one of the highest points of the property. Which if you're water harvesting, you know you always want to start at the top of the watershed and then work your way down. This right here is one of the top points. Now collecting road runoff can be an incredibly powerful, useful tool if you could take advantage of it. And what we have here is a nice little dip that would catch an amazing amount of water not only from the road, but from itself. I can just see a ton of water coming through this cattle guard. And then running along here along the side of the road. Now as it is now, it would just run along the side of the road. So right now this water would just probably pool up along the side of the road and then just uh, run along the ditch. But if we can funnel that water into the land here, create a little ditch, a little swale, go along along here, we can move quite a bit of water into the property. And this would be a nice little area for growing. 
Man, I just see so much potential. Now I'll show you a little exa example on the property next to ours. Now I'm sure this isn't man-made, but there's a little little ditch. You can see how the road kind of canters off to the side here. And then there's a little ditch that goes along the corner of the property where water flows through. Water stays in there for quite a while after it rains. And then you can see the trees that are just growing nicely just right along the side of the ditch this is that's all natural we can mimic that create our own little ditch and we'll be able to grow a lot more going along the northwest side which is one of the lower points of where we're catching water so unfortunately this will not be as useful to us this area this corner but we might be able to divert a little bit of water before it heads out of this direction. Now, of course, we don't want to try and stop all the water because people have water rights. You want to make sure that with water flows on the property, it's also leaving the area where it normally does. You want to don't want to stop the flow entirely. Use what you can, but then send it on its way back down the stream. And this is where, one of the areas where it would go back down the stream. All right, it's now about 10.30 over here, which means it's starting to get warm. Today is gonna be a hot one. And as you can see, it just kind of started working, so the generator is now running. <laughs> but hopefully, we won't have that problem with too much longer. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's just a little look around our property and some ideas about how we're, uh, how we want to harvest some water out here because those monsoon rains are coming. We have plans and we'll be able to institute those plans a lot better once we get to visually see how that water flows. So again, thanks for watching. I'm gonna try and get some footage of that rain when it comes down. So we'll be able to see how it looks. You guys can see how it looks as it runs down there and it should be pretty exciting. Definitely stay tuned for that. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Give this video a thumbs up if you like water harvesting. And honestly, who doesn't like water harvesting? It's amazing. <laughs> and uh, we're interested in what you're doing. What are you guys doing for water harvesting? Let us know in the comments section some of the water harvesting practices you're already doing or some of your plans. Let us know what's going on with you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.